Hello to everyone. After I have done more than 66,000 kilometers on my Tenere 700, riding it on any kind of terrain that you can imagine, I believe that I'm ready to make my long-term owner's review. So if you have nothing to do, grab your favorite drink and stay with me. Welcome back. As you can see, I even washed the bike. I actually did it because of this video. If I have a dirty bike, you wouldn't be able to see all the dents and scars that it has. And just for your information, this is going to be a long video. Uh, for those of you who prefer to watch something quick, like 5 or 10 minutes, this video is not going to be for you. I have so many details to share and I cannot make it fast. I'm really sorry about it. I bought this motorcycle two years ago from Varna, Bulgaria. Last year, I went on the trip around Europe all the way to Portugal just to see how the bike will handle a real journey. It was some kind of test between me and the machine, how we're gonna work together. And because I was very pleased from the result, I decided to do it again. It was more like a necessary step that I needed to build my confidence and make something different. As you already know, or maybe you don't if you're new to the channel, but I just come back from a long 39,000 km trip with this motorcycle. I went all the way from Varna to Magadan and back completely alone, no camera crew, no support vehicles with a minimum spare parts and tools. For many of you, this might sound like a big risk, but based on the previous experience that I have had with this motorcycle during my trip around Europe, I was 95% sure that I will go there and come back without any problems. And you might say, hold on, Pavlin, this 5% risk on such a long journey, it's actually a very big risk. And yes, you're right, it is a very big risk, but you know what? It is part of the adventure. And because I'm a lucky man, I have done this 39,000 kilometers without any problems. But not only this, I have done the total amount of 66,000 kilometers without any single problem. Nothing. Zero. In the following minutes of this video, I'm gonna share my opinion about the performance of this motorcycle on any kind of terrain. Highways, twisty roads, good roads, bad roads, potholes, muddy roads, sand, uh, Anything, anything that you can imagine, I already have done it. Let's first start with the price. I bought it a little bit under 10,000 euros from Varna, Bulgaria. They made me a little bit of discount. And it was the only motorcycle in this category that comes without all of the modern electronics like traction control, cruise control and all of these. And for many people, this is a minus, but for me, this was a big plus I wanted. A motorcycle that is as simple as possible and as light as possible. Of course, it is not a dirt bike, it is not a 120 kilogram motorcycle, but the way that it has was affordable to me. I also understand that there are a few models that are lighter, with better suspension and powerful engines, way more dirt orientated than this theory, but none of them got the famous Yamaha reliability. And being an owner of the old model 660Z with 193,000 kilometers travel free, this was the most logical choice to me. It comes with upside down 43mm Kayaba Fox fully adjustable front and rear. It is okay for 90% of the riders 90% of the time. But because I'm a heavy guy and I do like riding on dirt roads here and there, I decided to change the springs with stiffer ones set for my weight. After the conversion, it became like a new bike. It hasn't got the preload option, but honestly, after I changed the springs set to my weight, this was not necessary at all. And honestly, I cannot understand why people are focused so much on the suspension trial. This model got 210 front and 200 on the rear. I never needed more than that, even on the uh, dirty, muddy, bumpy Magadan trucks. If you want to spend your time only on the dirt roads, there are much better options than this 10 or any motorcycle in this category. The engine delivers only 72 horsepower and many won't like it, but this is more than enough for me. I travel alone, never ride fast and always try to avoid highways. And on any other road, it performs just great. I'm 185 centimeters, little above six foot, and ergonomically, it suits me perfectly without the need to any adjustment. I don't have any bar risers and I'm still with the stock seat. The modifications that I have done are minimal, mostly to help me ride long distances without the need to think about the bike at all. 
I have a bash plate to protect the engine underneath, hand guards to prevent breaking my levers, rear handles and plate to move the motorcycle easy and to load some luggage, high exhaust because of the bending 10 700 bracket and heated grips to help me ride in the cold days. A few people asked me to make a long term review of my MIF exhaust and I honestly told to do it but then I realized that there is nothing much to say. It is just working as it should. I have no problem whatsoever. The only thing that it is maybe in my opinion it's a little bit louder but I cannot confirm this. I really need to test the sound before and now. Just a second. I'm gonna do it now. So tell me your opinion in the comments below. The rest is just perfect. I will add maybe a small rubber washers here under the this plate where it's connected with the frame to minimize the vibrations because I do believe that it has a little bit more vibrations just because of this bracket but it might be just in my head. I need to test it but the rest is just perfect. It's never touched here or the mm, swing arm never ever. It just works as it should. I used to have a lower crash guards and I really liked them because they were almost invisible but when I changed the bash plate they were not suitable because they actually the bash plate is mounted on the same mounting points. So I had to remove it and I switched it to the upper crash guards but I never liked them. They convert this tiny slim motorcycle to a fatty ugly machine and it was looking like a cage so I never never liked them and it was a matter of time just to remove it and guess what when I removed it I felt the motorcycle so much lighter. The idea of this uh, point now is not to convince you that without crash guards is better. No, do whatever is good for you. I don't mind at all, but just keep in mind that everything at a weight, especially on the upper part of the motorcycle, and on some stage you will feel it. So that's why I decided to remove it. I haven't crashed since then. But I don't think that this tenere will crash so badly. And even if I break these plastics, I'm gonna change it, they are not that expensive. The stock windscreen, it's not perfect, but honestly, I never seen a stock windscreen perfect. Even on some of the most expensive motorcycles like a GS 1250 or KTM 1290 and many other brands. Always something to be done. And because, as you know, I film my trips, if I have a taller screen, it will block the view of my camera and I just left it like that and I don't mind at all. I don't have any problem with the stock seat. It is okay for me. Maybe I'm not an example because my ass is already immune, but as I said, it is fine. The only modification that I have done is this 3D mesh on the top. And in my opinion, this is the only modification that really works. Handlebar 28 millimeters, good riding position to me. Perfect visibility on the dashboard and mirrors. Speaking of dashboard, there are some things that could be done differently, like showing the engine and outside temperature at the same time, but I can live with it. Also, the vibrations that everyone complains about are not a problem to me at all. It vibrates a lot when you ride on a bumpy or dirt roads. And on this type of terrain, I prefer to focus on the road instead of the dash. I cannot understand why I have to watch it all the time. It is not a TV screen. Also, I won't recommend to go and buy these brackets that will stop this vibrating. They are selling everywhere now. This is not a good idea. It vibrates or moves with a purpose. When you stop it, something else will break. My friend and mechanic plumber already learned this lesson the hard way and some of the frames here were just untighted because of the stopped vibration that he has done by installing these bracelets. That's why it is just good to leave it like that. As I said, it is not a TV screen. I don't understand why people need to focus so much on it. I know that on 2023 model they already changed the dashboard. It is smaller now, it does not vibrate, it has colors, it has different features, it has free riding modes and it has free modes of the ABS and some other interesting features like Bluetooth communication and stuff like that. But I am a simple man, I prefer to have a simple things. Also, Bluetooth system is not something that I enjoy while I ride and all of this communication with the bike is something that cannot help me at all to have a better experience when I travel. As I said, some of these features are very nice, but they come with a certain price. At the moment, I'm not talking about money. No, it is reliability that is compromised. They remove the physical button from the dashboard, the one that I have to turn off the ABS on my old Tenere. It still exists on the new model, but 
it's only activate the ABS or change the different ABS modes. Now to turn off the ABS you have to go to the menu using a small scrolling button very similar to computer mouse button that helps to scroll and confirm by pressing it. This is not a big deal Pavlin you might say, you will learn to use it very fast, it's actually very easy. I understand but I spoke with a few owners of this new dashboard and they already complain about the functions of this scrolling button. When it gets a little bit dusty inside, it stops working. And it's very annoying when you cannot turn off your ABS. And uh, Yamaha still haven't offered any solution, but it will be a problem for the future. So as I said, the reliability of the model is already compromised because of the innovations that they made. This is just one example, but I hope that you got the idea. The more electronics and new gadgets you add on your motorcycle, the more or the bigger chances you have to encounter some kind of problems on the road. That's why I prefer simple things. Anyway, everything that I have said so far, you might find pointless because I haven't said anything about the performance of the bike, but in my opinion, it's very important to understand what this bike is before you even buy it, instead of buy it and realize that it is just not for you. All right, let's now start with the actual riding experience. The first thing that I will mention, these are the highways. These are the type of roads that I used the less, but still use it here and there. And it will be the same for you, no matter how or where you plan to ride your tenere. Now, for example, on my trip to Magadan, I've got not much, but I'll say I've got like 500 kilometers of highways. And if the motorcycle is not performing well there, it will be a problem. You can't just teleport yourself to Tet Turkey or Georgian mountains just like that. As I said, there will be many boring miles before you even get there. So this tenere will allow you to ride it at 120, 130, even 150 kilometers per hour if you want. Yes, it will never have the performance of GS1250 or KTM 1290, but I guess that you understood this before you bought it. Keep in mind that this is very economical bike. I never use more than 4, 4.2 liters per 100 kilometers, but I never ride fast. If you twist to 150, 60 kilometers per hour, I don't think that you will use less than 6 liters per 100 kilometers. And on one long trip like mine, it will be a huge difference, maybe 1000 euros difference in your budget. Twisty or secondary roads. This is the place where this motorcycle will make you smile all the time. With the proper riding skills, you can play with the big boys without any problems. The engine is powerful enough and thanks to the low torque, you will have a great fun. I agree that you might miss a few horsepower in specific situations, but you will have the same feeling even with 150 horsepower motorcycle. And I'm sure that you will never regret the purchase because of the flexibility that this model is going to give you. Off-road, on flat, open, dirt roads, you will fly with confidence even if you're a beginner. On mud, deep gravel, river crossing and sand, the bike will surprise you in a good way. The more you ask, the easier it's going to be for the bike to handle it. You will be the person who will say stop, that's enough. On hard or technical off-road will be more or less the same story. I think that Paul Torres already proved a lot of that. In a few words, the capabilities of this motorcycle on and off-road are much bigger than the riding skills of 95% of the riders. And I'm not an exception. This motorcycle is way, way better than me. As I said many times before, this motorcycle is like a soldier. I'm just giving the orders and it's completed without any problem. Pam, 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 pam. Yes, many people complain that it is top heavy. That is true because of the high position of the petrol tank, it is top heavy. But some of us are also very heavy, but we do nothing about it. So this is something that we cannot change, I cannot change, and I have to live with it. Once you get used to it, it is not that bad. And believe it or not, because of this top heavy bike, it is very easy to ride it on the twisty roads. It is not only my opinion, but I believe that when you have this contra weight on the top, it's very easy to put the bike down and actually great fun to ride on the twisty roads. And because of so many pros that it has, this one con I can easily forgive. Let's now talk about maintenance. Everything in this model is easy to do by yourself. If we talk about regular checks, it is enough to lift it on the center stand and I can immediately see the antifreeze and all levels. All changes, brake pads, cleaning, changing the filter, battery, lights, fuses or anything around the bike is easy to access it. Everything is done with the simplicity in mind. 
The only difficult part to access are the spark plugs, but besides the BMW GS Boxer, I don't think that you will find any other two-cylinder motorcycle that will provide easy access to the spark plugs. The next point that I would like to mention in this video, and maybe the most important for me, this is reliability. And the only thing that I can say on this point is that Yamaha once again proved that they are one of the most reliable brands on the market today. For these 66,000 kilometers, I did not have any problem. Keep in mind that these are kilometers done in many places around the world, not in weekend rides. Some of them are in really raw conditions. On my last Magadan trip, I had 5,000 kilometers on dirt roads, included a lot of dust, rain, mud, gravel, big stones, broken rocks, and anything. Even so, the bike completed everything travel free. I have no problems with bearings, with valves, wheels, nothing. Even the chain that I got lasted 36,000 kilometers, even though I never cleaned it and for its total life I used only two chain sprays. The sprockets are still in affordable condition, I can use it even more. There are only two problems that I have found for the 66,000 kilometers. They are not real problems, but something that Yamaha need to think about it. The first is the throttle response, because it has cables Sometimes it's jump very fast. Even with a minimum throttle, it's go like this. And it's very noticeable on first and second gear. And if you do some very uh, slow maneuvers in technical terrains and you, you need to put a little bit of gas, you cannot really control it. And I understand that this could be easy fix it by just installing the ride by wire on the next model. But I also understand that this ride by wire could be a possible problem on the road. That's why I prefer to be like this, but it is something that many won't like it. The second problem that I have found, and I don't know why anyone on YouTube don't talk about it. I already spoke with a few owners and they also got exactly the same problem. Uh, early morning when you start the engine, when the engine is still cold and you first put the first gear and start riding, immediately if you make like a fast start, the clutch makes this strange noise. It sounds like... Uh, like a friction between dry um, clutch disc, it was like and then already start working normally. And it is always like that, no matter what kind of oil I use. 10W Yamaha loop or 1060 or 1050 Motor X, 1050 Moto, any kind of oils, it's always the same. So some people say that it is because of the high position of the clutch compared to the rest of the motorcycle, I really don't know. But it is something that maybe someone of you know and will let me know in the comment section below. And if we include the top heaviness of the bike, so the problems or the cons of the model are already free. As you can see here, this decal is already worn out because of my saddlebag. It stay here like this next to the plastic and when I ride in dusty terrains and a lot of sand, it reacts like a sandpaper and actually destroy it. I understand and I know that I can put these brackets here to protect it, but I don't really like to have all of these cages everywhere. I don't mind, I will just change it and that's it. Everything else works absolutely trouble free and doesn't matter what kind of weather conditions or riding conditions I was facing at the moment. As I said so many times, it's like a real soldier. Will I buy this model again? Hell yes. Will I recommend it to all of my friends? Yes, absolutely. Buy it and you will understand what is to ride a motorcycle that will always put a smile on your face. And now to the last point, for whom this motorcycle is not. In my opinion, it's not really suitable if you have a pillion. You can do it, but on some stage it's going to be a problem. The motorcycle is too small, too narrow for two people. And if you add um, hard panels, and you have to if you have a pillion, you will completely ruin the whole construction of the bike, the whole idea of the bike. It is also not a highway machine. You can ride it with 140, 50, 60 if you like, but it will never be GS 1250 or KTM 1290. It is also not a dirt bike, even though it looks like. Don't look on Paul Torres, he is on another league. And it is also not really suitable for short people. If you are under 178, 176 or even lower, don't even buy it. I know that you can lower it here from the forks and also there are kits for underneath. But again, you will ruin the whole conception of the bike. Better is to find another solution. It will be more comfortable for you and maybe cheaper. 
That is everything that I plan to say on this moment. I know it's a long video, but I hope this information will be useful to at least one person. If you have any additional questions, just let me know in the comment section below and I will try to answer it as quick as possible. Always ride safe and see you next time. Ciao.